If you dragged a blue whale out of the water, its own body would kill it, its rib cage would collapse, and its organs would crush under its weight. The blue whale is so big it can only exist in one place, floating in the cold, dark waters of planet Earth. Now give that impossible body the biggest appetite on Earth, and it survives on something you could crush between two fingers. Every day, a blue whale eats approximately four tons of tiny krill just to stay alive. This creature is breaking every rule of biology, and yet somehow, it is still here. Which makes you think, how can something this big exist at all? Picture it for a moment. A shadow longer than a basketball court hanging just beneath the surface. Sunlight scatters across its back as if hitting a slowly moving island. Its heartbeat, measured from inside that enormous chest, is so deep and slow, you could sink your breath to it. Four, maybe five beats per minute when it dives. Inside that body sits a heart weighing more than a small car, pushing blood through arteries so wide you could slide your arm inside one. Everything about the blue whale is oversized beyond reason. Its tongue alone weighs as much as an elephant. Its skull is longer than a family car. Even the baby, on the day it's born, is already larger than every other species of adult whale except a handful. A newborn blue whale drinks around 200 liters of milk per day, gaining almost 90 kilograms of weight every single day. It grows so fast its skin stretches like rising dough. But all of this size comes with a problem the whale can't escape. Gravity. On land, its skeleton would collapse. Blue whale bones are strong, but they're not built for land pressure. They're built to float. The ocean's buoyancy carries the weight that its bones can't. Even the blubber, which can be more than half a meter thick, becomes a kind of natural life jacket. It keeps warmth inside, the cold outside, and helps the whale remain suspended in the water without sinking like a stone. The whale's lungs aren't huge, they are efficient. A blue whale exhales up to 90% of the air in its lungs in a single blow. Compared to a human's 15%, that's super effective. When it inhales, that fresh burst of oxygen floods the blood. Blue whales carry enormous amounts of myoglobin in their muscles, far more than any land mammal. Myoglobin stores oxygen the way a battery stores power, letting the whale dive, sometimes to depths deeper than 300 meters. As it descends, its heart rate slows, conserving oxygen for the brain and muscles. But this leads us to the biggest mystery in the whale's design, energy. To keep this massive body alive, the whale needs a food source that is rich, reliable, and available in bulk. And nature's answer was something that seems ridiculous. Small, shrimp-like creatures that drift in huge clouds, glowing slightly pink and red in the blue water. A blue whale can swallow tens of thousands of liters of seawater in one gulp. Inside its mouth are baleen plates. Flexible, bristly curtains made of keratin. The same material as your fingernails. These plates trap krill while the whale forces the water back out. One sweep through a dense swarm can yield hundreds of kilograms of food. The whale must do this over and over again, feeding for hours. In peak season, a single blue whale may eat up to four tons of krill per day. This is the fragile part. Krill do not appear as everywhere. They need very specific conditions cold water, nutrient-rich currents, plankton blooms built from light and minerals. All of this makes the blue whale's survival feel like a mathematical coincidence. Oceans shift, temperatures change, currents drift, and entire populations of krill can rise or collapse within years. 
The largest creature ever to live depends entirely on one of the smallest of the ocean. That dependency, by all logic, should be too unstable to support a giant. But somehow, the blue whale makes it work. It moves thousands of kilometers across oceans, following these invisible pulses of life. When the krill bloom, they appear. When the bloom fades, it moves on. Its entire existence is tied to the shifting patterns of the sea, a creature built on the very edge of biology's limits. So, if a creature this massive can stay afloat, your finger can probably defy gravity and like and subscribe. The strange thing about the blue whale is that its size doesn't just help it survive, it changes the ocean around it. Imagine a creature so large that every breath it takes, every dive it makes, and every rise back to the surface leaves marks on the planet itself. When a blue whale plunges hundreds of meters down to where the light dims and the temperature drops, it is not just chasing krill. It is stirring the sea. Its vast tail pushes water like a slow-motion explosion, mixing layers that would otherwise sit still for weeks. And when it comes back up, something even stranger happens. Blue whales feed deep but release nutrients near the surface. Their feces fertilize the top layers of the ocean. These nutrients feed phytoplankton, the tiny plants that form the base of almost every food web in the sea. More plankton means more krill. More krill means more life. The biggest animal on Earth indirectly nourishes the very creatures it depends on. Scientists call this the whale pump, a nutrient elevator powered by muscle, hunger, and ancient instinct. In a way, blue whales keep the ocean's engine running. But this harmony only exists as long as the ocean stays cold enough and predictable enough for krill to flourish. And that today is not guaranteed. The sea is warming. In some regions, krill swarms have shrunk. Ocean noise from ships and sonar creates walls of sound that can confuse a whale trying to navigate underwater. Some individuals carry scars from ship strikes. The whale's body is built for challenge but not chaos. It is easy to forget how vulnerable they are because of how enormous they look. Yet their entire life strategy has no backup plan. Blue whales breed slowly. A mother carries her calf for almost a year before giving birth. Then she nurses it for months, pouring thick, high-fat milk into a body that grows faster than any mammal on record. She can only raise one calf at a time. Both mother and calf must rely on the ocean behaving itself, currents moving the right way, krill blooms returning at the right time, and temperatures staying within a narrow band. For most species, that level of dependency would be a mistake. For the blue whale, it is a gamble. Nature has allowed to continue, for now. Yet despite everything working against them, blue whales still roam the sea. In some places, they're even returning, slowly rising from the brink after industrial whaling nearly erased them. Their presence proves something quietly. Miraculous. The ocean can still support giants, as long as those giants can still find the food they need. Watch a blue whale move, and you'll see this miracle in motion. Its enormous body glides with almost no effort, each tail stroke sending it forward like a drifting continent. Light fades as it dives and faint ribbons of cold water curl along its flanks. The whale's heartbeat slows. Its lungs compress, its muscles run on stored oxygen as it descends into the dim world where krill rise each night like living snow. It's a strange deal nature made. The largest animal ever known survives on creatures barely the size of a fingernail. Somehow that combination works. 
Somehow, it has worked for millions of years. But imagine standing next to this giant. You feel a question forming. Why does something this impossible still exist? Why hasn't size, hunger, gravity, gravity, or the shifting ocean undone it? The answer is simple and astonishing. The blue whale survives because the ocean allows it. And as long as that balance holds, cold water rising, krill blooming, currents pulsing with life, this creature that shouldn't exist will continue to glide through the world's last great wilderness. Feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel. And tell me this, if you were the size of a blue whale for one day, what would be the very first thing you would try to eat? There are no wrong answers, only unsettling ones. And if you are ready for an even deadlier life form diving deeper than you can imagine, watch the next video called Why Sperm Whales Get Deadlier the Deeper You Go.